Okay, so I got a question. I've got this question a few times is how would this be different from just swinging? How would this trainer be different from just swinging something heavy like a kettlebell or a weighted club or working with speed sticks or whatever it would be? So um, in some ways it's based on that concept. It's based on a kettlebell swing as a golf training aid. So if you think I don't have a kettlebell, but typically with a kettlebell, and I developed this out of actually starting with a kettlebell. Um, so with a kettlebell drill, in order to make your arms be, if you put your hands this way, it's not good, right? So you're getting this kind of thing. So when you swing a kettlebell to, as a golf training thing, you put your arms, hold it this way, which then puts your arms in the right position. Right? So I was working with somebody teaching them, and I actually did that. It kind of made a couple earlier versions of this. Um, but what happened is then, I find that if that if you take that as your fundamental swing motion, now your hands are in a position where you're really inclined to hinge the wrong way. So the motion is good in terms of the motion, what your arms are doing with a kettlebell. And if you just want to feel what it's like to swing a heavy thing, then that's good. But it doesn't do all the things for you. So there are a couple things that this is adding. So this is essentially a kettlebell that is then has um, these elements of containment to teach you how to apply that kind of force in plane, controlling the face without doing, you know, extraneous movements. So for instance, if I was swinging a kettlebell, I don't have any reference to this is, this is face orientation with a golf club, right? So. If I take a golf club and do that, this would be face orientation, right? If I do this, open, closed, open, closed. And what is typical of people, is because it's a natural swinging motion, is you'll swing open and closed, open and closed. So what this is encouraging you to do is be aware more of swinging in a position where you're keeping your face square to your path. So it's just, it's a way to, again, create, how do you create that kind of force of swinging a heavy object without doing other odd things either with your body. So the other part of it is, so if you just take the task with this of drawing a circle and keeping this thing moving through on the plane, you're both understanding how to create a consistent plane and also how to control your face through that hitting area. Now, in a real swing, when you get up past here, you are going to let it go both ways to some extent. But through here, it's good to have a consistent motion. So if you take that and learn that motion through the ball, and you notice that because the handles are a little bit this way, it's also just like a kettlebell holding underneath, encouraging you to put your arms in the right position. And then also, unlike the kettlebell, it's, it's got your hands what would be almost exactly like a golf, even though it looks nothing like holding a golf club, right? If I was just to take that, this hand's a little lower. And if I was just to take that and put it together, I'm actually in pretty much the same place as I would have a golf grip. So you're learning proper relationship of your hands with the hands down, elbows in, what the plane is, what the face angles are doing. And then one more aspect, which if you swing a kettlebell, because the mass is short, there's no secondary motion of a kettlebell, right? So you're just dealing with the bigger motion. With this, there's an element just like with a club there's an element of timing this hinge and release action. So when you go then, when you work with that, you can time, say, oh, if your habit is to release too soon, you can start working on, I'm gonna release there. All right, so that's, you feel it, the release as this, as it shifts from one hand to the next. So you can see in a little way, the release is right there. Releasing there, so you're working on 
releasing the club in the right place and feeling that motion. So using your big muscles, but also feeling that secondary hinge. So you could piece all those elements together with different things, but I think there, there's a big advantage in working with something that contains a lot of elements at once. Because when you think about it, like the way people speed train, right? Get rid of the club head and then, you know, swing as fast as you can, right? And you'll build up your fast twist much with muscles. But then you see people swinging in ways that it's like, well, yeah, you can move that fast, but you're not going to have any control with that. So move fast within the contain, you know, pattern that you can find reliable control. So that's the idea. And then if you don't have to think about much, you naturally are going to swing the e-bell in this planar fashion pretty quick. So now you don't have to think, okay, now I have to figure out how to go fast, figure out how to release it in the right place, figure out how to, and then piece it all together. And what happens is you are on a path of chasing one thing messes up something else. Then you try to fix the other thing. Then you try to fix the other thing. And I'm sure we've all experienced this, right? Where you go around and around. So if you can think of this as a singular trainer that is capturing as many elements as possible, and I, I wouldn't say that it captures every single element, um, but it, it captures a lot of them, you can almost just swing this, draw a circle, feel that the release is happening in the right place, and just essentially copy that. So just copy it. That's it. Don't think, just copy it.